Hello, dear ones. I come to you today on Martin Luther King Jr. Monday, where we celebrate his ministry and all of his many contributions. And on this day, what I'd like to do is turn my attention to the one of the places that helped train him as an organizer for civil rights. Certainly, he was trained and forged by his upbringing, by his faith, by the life that he lived, by the lessons he learned simply by living a life that was affected by racism and classism and the oppression of his people. But I want to talk about the Highlander Folk School, where many of the civil rights leaders were trained as organizers. It was founded in 19... 32 by Miles Horton, educator Don West, and a Methodist minister, James Dorbrowski. The three of them wanted to create a center that helped organize laborers for their rights. And they did that in the 30s and the 40s. And then slowly they began to be aware that they needed to expand their vision and started getting very involved in the early 50s in civil rights. And in the 50s, they brought some, they offered trainings to leaders in the civil rights movements. They offered it to existing leaders and emerging leaders. So they did a training for the students founding SNCC. So imagine being John Lewis as a young student activist going to Highlander and being taught about organizing by a white man, Miles Horton, and an African-American woman, Septima Poinsett Clark. He had never, ever been taught by an integrated team. And it changed his life in what he imagined might be possible. The same was true for Rosa Parks. When she arrived at Highlander, to be trained in community organizing. She sat down at the dinner table. She arrived late in the day and she sat down at the dinner table and much to her surprise, something happened that had never happened in her life. She was served by white skinned people and she was served and treated with dignity by white skinned people. That too transformed her life and it was when that story that Martin Luther King Jr., one of the stories he shared when he returned for Highlander's 25th anniversary in 1957, where he had been trained as a community organizer for civil rights. When he went back and was the featured speaker in 1957, it was, one of, it was that Rosa Parks story that began his remarks. He wanted to lift up that vision of dignity and being treated with dignity and how inspiring that was both to John Lewis and to Rosa Parks. So it was only a few days after Rosa Parks returned from Highlander that she refused to give up her bus, her bus, her seat on the bus. It was seeing and experiencing being treated with worth and dignity that changed her life. And the Highlander Folk School continued to support the work of the civil rights movement and supported many activists, Julian Bond, Ralph, Ralph Ab Abernathy, Martin Luther King, all these leaders were trained at Highlander. And then, in the 60s, they turned their attention in the late 60s and early 70s to environmental racism and the impact of that intersection between race and the environment. And today, it is a school for social justice organizing. But sometimes we forget about what inspired some of our most important leaders. And sometimes we think of them in heroic terms, that they 
didn't have a foundation of training and support behind them and that they weren't part of a larger movement but kind of came into the world singly and that is part of that heroic myth making but actually all these civil rights activists were part of an empowering group of people that supported one another and it's out of that background and a life of faith that Martin Luther King pursued doggedly the vision and his dreams of racial equity and financial equity and political equity for all people. And so it is that dream that I want to remember today and that legacy of training from the Highlander Folk School. One of the interesting things to note about Highlander is Miles Horton's wife, Zelfia, knew the gospel hymn, We Shall Overcome, took that gospel hymn and rewrote it to be a protest song. And Pete Seeger, as a folk singer, came to one of the trainings at Highlander and actually became a resident folk singer for a time at Highlander. And it was when he took We Shall Overcome and had it published that it became the anthem, one of the anthems for the civil rights movement. And all of that happened at Highlander. So there's always these backstories. And it's so important that we lift up these backstories so that we have a fuller picture of what makes our heroes and our heroes. Thanks so much for being with me today.